Hey guys, how's it going? Brian from Brian Boas here. I recently built a grow out rack for my sub adult boas in the one to three year old age range, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So today I wanted to show you this rack and demonstrate the design and the features so that if you're looking to build a similar rack for your boas, hopefully this will give you some inspiration and ideas. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe to the Brian Boas YouTube channel so you don't miss out on future videos on keeping and breeding boas, as well as regular updates on my boa breeding activities. So first off, my grow out rack holds these 28 quart Sterilite tubs. Now these are about five inches deep, about 22 inches long, and about 15 inches wide. And I find these are a good size for most one to three year old boas up to about three and a half feet or so in length. So basically they, once they're done with their baby rack at about six months to a year, I'll transfer them to these tubs and then they can grow out for a couple years before moving to their adult housing, which is either typically a Iris uh, CB110 tub or a Vision Boa tub or a four to six foot plastic snake cage. And so I had built a rack to hold these tubs previously, but I didn't build it really strong. And basically I just bolt, I just screwed the sides directly to the base and the shelf like I've done with some of my smaller baby racks. And it really wasn't a robust design and the rack kind of sagged and it wasn't a very good solution. So I went back and I rebuilt it very, very robustly using the same principles I use for my larger racks like my Vision Boa Tub rack. And I'm really happy with the results. And I want to show you exactly how I put these racks together. Uh, these videos are just meant to give you a general idea. This isn't kind of a how-to step-by-step. But if you like some of these ideas, you know, please feel free to use them and design your own racks exactly how you want, the right size for you and the right materials. Um, this is just something that worked for me. But, you know, of course, you can build your rack any way you want. So the configuration that I built the rack, it has three tubs wide and there's a total of nine shelves. So it can hold a total of 27 of these 28 quart tubs. Right now I really only have it set up to hold 21 tubs. The top shelf and the bottom shelf I have empty, which I'm using for storage. But I can eventually add a heat strip in here and some additional tubs if I so desire. I actually built it with two extra shelves compared to the earlier configuration, just to give me a little bit of extra room for my baby snakes to grow up. And so the way that's important to get a very robust design is you wanna build a frame for the base that the side pieces can be attached to, and then the shelves can be attached to the side pieces. And so, for this particular design, I use a two by four frame, and this is actually a one by two, but the design is similar for the two by four frame that I'm using here, so I thought I'd just show you this for demonstration purposes. And the frame at the bottom of this rack is made out of two by fours, and it has dimensions of 49 inches by 23 and a half inches. So basically, I took two 46 inch two by fours and two 23 and a half inch two by fours. And I bolted them together or screwed them together to get a uh, 49 by 23 and a half inch frame. And I'll just give you a close up of the frame real quick. Okay, so now we're at ground level and you can see the frame. So this is the front. You see I have casting wheels attached to the bottom of the frame. So there's a total of six casting wheels. These are two inch casting wheels I've got three in the front and three in the back. And so you see that's the front piece, which is a 46 inch two by four. And then on the sides here, we have 23 inch or 23 and a half inch two by fours. And you can see the side supports are bolted uh, in, or screwed into the side. And then looking through the bottom shelf, you can see there's actually three of these side pieces in the back. So there's a total of two on each side and three in the back, which is a total of seven. And these side pieces I used uh, six inch plywood. It's five eighth inch thick plywood that I just happened to have left over from a previous build project. And they're six inches wide by about 62 inches high. 
and that is enough for a total of nine shelves. Depending on how many shelves you want, you could vary the height of the side pieces. So now to look at the actual shelf pieces. There's actually a total of 10 of these shelf pieces and each shelf piece is going to be 49 inches long by 23 and a half inches wide. And you can see the bottom shelf I've got screwed directly into that 2x4 frame. Gives it a really nice strong base and the casters make it super easy to move it around your snake room. And then you can see I've securely screwed in at the bottom with a total of six screws. And then you can see for each shelf, I've got two screws um, holding the shelf to the side pieces. Now I'm gonna pan from the top to the bottom, just so you can see all nine shelves going down to the base. And again, that bottom shelf I have empty now, and you can see the casters. And so you can see there's a total of 21 tubs in it now, but with the bottom and top shelf that are currently empty, I can add uh, six more tubs for a total of 27 tubs. So now I want to talk about the materials I used. This is actually uh, MDF, medium density fiberboard for the shelves. And these side pieces and the two by fours are just plywood. This is 5 8 inch plywood. And I used that because, of course, I had the 5 8 inch plywood left over from my other rack build. But um, I, years ago, when I was first started building racks, I really liked the look of this MDF. You know, it's got kind of a nice finish to it. Um, it doesn't look all rough like the plywood. And it works okay, but over the years, I found that it kind of splits and it's, you know, not the most durable material. It's really not waterproof. So if I was going to build this rack again from scratch, I would probably just use plywood. Plywood offers you uh, the best bang for the buck. It's easy to work with and it's relatively lightweight. I've, I'll also use melamine to build racks, which is another material you can use. But it's like super heavy and really, really dense. So for me, the best bang for the buck is plywood. But of course, use whatever material fits your own purposes and your own desires. So once you've built your base frame with the casters and you've attached the bottom shelf to it, you're going to attach the side pieces and then you're going to build it up shelf by shelf from the bottom up. And when you do this, it's important to put tubs on the, each shelf and you want a spacing piece to give you an appropriate clearance. You don't want it too tight that the racks bind up when you try to pull them out or the tubs bind up. But you also don't want it too loose that the snakes can sneak out and escape through the gap. And when I was first building racks, I had issue with them being too tight and they would bind up because what would happen is the wood would kind of expand over time. Um, since then, I've kind of put a little more clearance and typically I use thicknesses of newspaper just to, to give me about uh, an eighth of an inch or so clearance. But again, you don't want it to be too loose because the snakes can get, they can push their way and escape. When I was building this rack, I actually left some of the gaps a little too loose. So I'm actually using these popsicle sticks for now as a shim. And they just go under here, you know, two on each side, or, you know, actually it's a stack of three on each side and some in the back. And so I intend to rebuild this at some point just to make it a little not as loose. But for right now, the popsicle sticks are working fine as a shim. But you could use whatever just to give it, uh, pop it up a little bit so the snake can't push its way out. I removed three tubs from one of the shelves just so I can show you what I'm using to heat this rack. That's an ultratherm heat mat. And it's a 48 inch by 11 inch heat mat. And I have it uh, taped down using... Uh, aluminum foil tape and it works really well with this particular setup. I'm using a Herbstat 6 uh, to as a thermostat. There you can see the heat uh, thermostat probe that I have taped to the middle of the ultratherm uh, heat mat and I set it so it maintains a hot spot in the tub of about 90 degrees and 
The actual setting on the thermostat can vary by a few degrees. I just checked the inside of the tub using a um, infrared heat um, thermometer, laser thermometer, just to make sure that my hot spot's about 90 degrees. The cool end is, of the tub is typically 75 to 80 degrees. Now I'm going to show you inside of the tub. And first thing I want to point out is you can see I melted these holes for ventilation in the side using a soldering iron. Just got some of them on the top of both the front end and in the back of the tub. So looking inside the tub, you also notice I use a system with these 16 ounce deli cups for water. And you can see one of them is attached to the side using a zip tie and then the other one can conveniently be removed and um, washed or you know replaced with a new tub makes it super easy to clean the water i'm using uh, pro coco coconut husk bedding just to get higher humidity for these babies so they don't have any shedding issues this is a hiding spot that i made from a drawer organizer that i got at the dollar store and as the beautiful baby, this is a 2019 Hog Island Boa. This one is, you know, almost a year old now. You know, beautiful animal. So hoping to have some more Hog Island Boas on the ground in about another few weeks. These are, you know, one of my favorite locality boas. So I'll show you another animal that's growing out in here. This is another Hog Island Boa. This is a 2018 baby, a year older than the one I just showed you. This is a two-year-old. You can see quite a bit bigger. But, you know, similar setup. Keep it relatively simple, and the snakes seem to do really well. So this animal is probably about close to three feet long. So, you know, she'll probably be good to keep in here for maybe another six months to a year. And then we'll probably move her up to her adult housing. So in this rack, it's mostly my uh, grow out dwarf boas that I've held back. There's a few younger boas, a few morph boas, etc., that I've acquired, but they're mostly my holdbacks. And this is a Tar Humar from 2018. So this one is now going on two years old. You can see she's still pretty small. I'll make sure she's in focus there. But, you know, another beautiful animal. This one's a little lighter than some of my other tar humaras. This one, the mother is kind of, has a lot of pink and is really light in color. I actually had paired her up again this year, but I'm not sure that I'm going to get babies. It looks like I probably won't have any tar humara babies, unfortunately, this year. And why don't I show you one more tar humara. This is a 2017 baby. A year older than the baby I just showed you. So this one is probably going to move up to the adult housing in you know, another six months or so. You can see she's probably a little over three feet now. Just another beautiful dark Tar Humara. This is actually a half sibling to the female that I just showed you previously. So let's look at one more animal. So I didn't breed this one, but I'm really excited about this one. This is a Argentine boa that I picked up late last year. This is actually a 29, 2019 baby. You can see he's actually pretty big for a 2019. He's growing real fast. Um, you can see he still has some saddles, you know, in contrast to my older Argentines, which the saddle have really become less distinct. See, the, the younger animals have a much more well-defined saddle, if you've ever seen my older ones. Um, but just a beautiful animal. And the Argentines, as I've you know, said many times in my videos, are probably my favorite locality boa. Certainly one of the top, you know, two or three. So there you have it. That's my 28-quart boa grow-out rack for my Soledal boas. I hope this video was helpful and maybe gave you some ideas for your own build projects. As always, please feel free to reach out to me with any questions. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.